There you go. I think I did that. Yep. I think I'm good. doing it. <laughs> so yeah. Okay. Thanks, right. Dave. Y'all take You're care. Welcome. We'll do it. Bye-bye. The Bye. second second thing I wanted to say is since I mean the Socratic question is an example of small group learning just exactly like you described. So that has a pretty old and powerful tradition. Right. When people answer questions about the material they're learning, they internalize it a lot faster than just from lectures. Right. Oh, thanks. So Socrates uh, agreed with that, yes. Uh, I mean, it probably wasn't exactly the same, but yeah, it's sort of <laughs> a similar idea. Excellent. Well, thanks. Yeah. So, yeah, adult, as you will learn, as we think about our schooling, what we had as kids is different, and that's a what's for helping children learn is different than what adults need to learn. So, uh, and some, and there are benefits to it all, but like small groups are really a great chance for people. The good thing is as small groups, both as leaders and as, as uh, group members, you don't have to have all the answers. It's not like you're coming in there. Hi, I'm leading this group and I have all the answers. We're coming together to study together, to learn together. And so we're, we're as even as the teacher or the leader, you're not coming in with, I have it all down, let me impart my knowledge to you. It's, we're coming together to learn together, to grow together. So we are working together to create a, um, just, to, just to help each other, because there's no test at the end, there's no, um, this isn't about, you know, people passing a test or knowing something. It's about really just understanding each other, growing together, and really helping us grow in our faith and build a stronger faith supporting support system. So what I was going to do today, and we uh, is talk more about these aspects of design. This is another uh Jane Vella thing uh, where I adapt and it's kind of adapted, but it's those basic, um, you know, the reporter questions of who, what, where, when, why type of thing. And so we're just going to kind of go over some of those. But before we before we go all of that about the curriculum, does anybody have any qu other questions or thoughts about you know small groups and all that? Okay. Excellent. So let's go through uh, some of the answer, some of these questions and uh, kind of dive into what this curriculum is about so that we can um, just move forward. So first is who? The question is, so it's both like who's in the group, who's leading the group, who, uh, who's a part of it. So first the leaders are you. You guys are uh, taking leadership of a group and so that's important uh, but then there's the participants who are the people that are going to be attending your your gathering um so as i said these are it's a multi-generational series but uh so the people of all ages are invited to participate in this study and we're going to have levels different levels for um different ages and we'll go through that so it's not like i'm asking you to to host a multi-generational group if that's something you want to do that's great if not you know that's fine but we are going to um as we go through the curriculum later i'll show you that there are levels you know there's ways for different people to interact so uh for adults we'll have small groups we'll have some stuff for our youth we'll have stuff for families uh to interact with the, each other and so but it's the curriculum is geared towards multi-generation but we're also Participants would consider would be considered the San, people of San Pedro Presbyterian. That's kind of our target audience right now, or at least my target audience. But also, it can go beyond that. It can be, you know, if you feel free as as the leader. You can you have your your friend down the street or your coworker that you think, hey, I would like for them to be a part of a group. We're not. Uh, so I guess I think that's the other one. The next one. We're not limiting to, okay, I'm only going to invite people from our church. We can invite, you can invite somebody that you think would benefit from this, somebody that you just want to uh, spend time with in community more. So these are um, broadly 
based. So the people that you invite, uh, the people that are come to you will be a part of your group. Continuing that, the who is becomes the hard part of recruiting participants, right? This is always a struggle. It's a struggle of how do we get people to be involved in our group? What do we do? Um, so I'll share with you first my role. My role will be to uh, help in that, help facilitate that. So first, you know, in general, doing all church invites, letting people know about your groups and letting them know how to get plugged into them, uh, the information that they need to know so that they can lead their group. Um, uh, so I'll do that through like mass messages, through emails and other ways, just to, to let people know these are what's available. So because that will help. But then I will also try to do some private recruiting. I'll, I'll, I'll in, engage with different people and be like, hey, these people, because I know there's some people that said, oh, I, I don't want to lead, but I'd love to be a part of a group. So now I can say, well, I would love for you to be a part of, here's a couple groups. Why don't you go ahead and uh, I'll connect them to, to one of you and help them uh, get connected to a group. Because I know for some of you, you don't, you're not like, you don't have the depths of relationships with some people at the church or as many people you're there, you know, as I probably, most people know me so they can, they'll, I can help them uh, connect to you. Uh, but then there's also for you to, I would encourage you guys to invite people, right? To find ways to invite people, the people who think about the people that you know, the people that you would be interested in and send them a personal invitation. Uh, send them a, you know, an email or a call or a text say, hey, I'm having, I'm doing this group. I would love for you to be a part of it, you know. But then within that, don't fear rejection. I know I always hate when someone, I, I hate rejection. I'll say that, that when um, I invite somebody and they're like, well, you know, but I'd rather not. Even though I tell you not to fear rejection, still kind of, there's always that little bit of like, oh man, you know, that, that sadness that somebody does it. But don't let that, that um, fear of rejection not, uh, keep you from actually inviting people because I know a lot of times we can do that. We can say, "Well, I'm not going to invite anybody because I don't want them to reject me." But you also never know who will sign up, who will uh, be interested. Sometimes, you know, you invite some people, and the people that you think are going to be there are not there, and the people that you didn't expect to accept your invitation actually show up, and it actually makes things better you get to know people you didn't know as much or you get to connect on a different level in a different way than you thought um, also this is uh one of my favorite things to suggest is have you all seen you've all seen the uh, miracle on 34th street anyone yeah uh so in that there's the um santa claus guy uh is at where he's at like gimbals or something like that right and they someone's like hey where can where's this toy he's like well it's here on aisle seven but you know it's actually cheaper at gim or at macy's down the street and they're like oh okay and so so within that my why i say that is that if you are leading a group let's say your group is thursday nights at seven and you're just like and you're like hey i have a group at thursday night at seven and like well thursday nights are my family night i can't do that you know or i have to work on thursday nights so I, then you can say, well, I know of uh, this other group. They're meeting on Tuesdays at, at 2. They're like, oh, Tuesdays at 2 will work. So as we know each other's schedules, uh, I want to encourage you to be, like, if you invite somebody and they say, well, I can't do it that time, you know, sometimes that's just an excuse for I don't want to do it. So I'm going to tell you it's uh, I'm not doing it. But then other times it's uh, – that just might not have something to do. And if you suggest a different time, they're like, oh, okay, let me do that. So just be mindful of what people are doing uh, of when the other groups are so that you can suggest that to others. 
All right. And I want to encourage you, you can feel free to invite people outside of our church. You know, you have your circle of people, you know, people that you want, that you love, that maybe you want to have in this group. It's okay. You can mix your worlds. You can have somebody from your work and someone from your church, and that's not a big deal. You know, it might help them connect. It might uh, spur, help them grow in their faith, and that that's the important thing. It doesn't matter which church they attend or which group they're a part, uh, where they're part of. Just you know, if you feel God leading in your heart to invite somebody, invite them. You never know what's going to happen. All right. Okay. Yeah, like I said, the who, continuing who again, we've got, it's a multi-generational uh, thing. So these are just kind of how the, for the youth, we're going to have our youth Sunday school. We're going to do a spy group. We're going to do, they have a daily devotional and an art project as well as children. We're going to have worship, like a, a kind of like a worship service and a family devotional and art projects as well. So we're engaging for for youth to be involved and children and families to be involved. So that's another encouraging of try to encourage people. Maybe if they have uh, students or children, ways that they can be involved and help their family. So I wanted it to be something that is for all ages so that, you know, like, uh, Braden, like if your daughters are part of the group, one of our youth groups, and you have, and your group is with other people, you have a similar story. You can come and talk, talk about what you've learned and what we've experienced, you know, as an adult group and a youth group. And so it's kind of, they're moving together, you all are moving together as, as a family. So you have a, a common language in the, uh, to talk with people about. You're like, oh, we, we talked about this in our group. Oh yeah, and either things that were similar or things that are different to help, uh, engage in those conversations outside of small group time as well all right so that's who any questions on who on who nope excellent so moving on to the what what is this uh we're doing all right so let me go through the uh there's six weeks so i'm going to give you kind of an overview of what each week will entail or not entail, just kind of the basic ideas first. This is like kind of our scope of the thing. So week one is uh, about our pilgrimage. And we uh, Jesus invites us to journey with him through life. So the thing about Psalm 131, it's an incorporated into a, mic, a series of psalms called the Psalms of Ascent. It's a 15 psalms that are for the Jewish people as they traveled from their homes to Jerusalem to worship uh, at the temple. They would try, sometimes they would travel days or weeks to, from their villages to Jerusalem to worship. And so, and this was like the songbook for their journey, their, their road trip play mix, what they would sing as they worship. So kind of the first week we talk about this idea of pilgrimage and uh, placing Psalm 131 in its context of being a part of a, a pilgrimage of our movement towards God. And so it's setting the stage for that. The second week, we talk about our pride. And because the first verse says, you know, oh Lord, my heart is not proud. My eyes are not haughty, which is kind of one of those things it's like most of us would probably be like, well, that's not me. A lot of people would stop at that point and be like, well, this psalm is too much. I can't even begin to think that's me, so I'm just going to shut the page and, and move on. But we'll talk about how this psalm, you know, talks about our pride uh, and how we are supposed to use that as a way to help motivate us or, or to, to surrender our pride to God. So it's not saying, oh yeah, I have no pride, but it's like we're using it as a way to help move us forward uh, in that. Uh, the third week is our chaos. We talk about, because uh, the second verse says, starts out with, I have calmed and quieted my soul. So we think about our souls, and probably most of us wouldn't 
say that about our souls, that our souls are calm and quiet. But also maybe we have this, this stormy soul, this, this, we, we, we feel the chaos of life and the, the storms of, of work and family and, you know, keeping up our houses and keeping up our bills and life, just that, all the storms of life. And somehow, though, we kind of use the story, especially of Jesus calming the sea and how that can be related to our, us as well, that we can find calm when we uh, spend time with Jesus. Then the, the fourth week, we talk about our growth. And the, so the second part of verse two starts out, uh, goes like a weaned child with his mother. My soul is like a weaned child. So we're talking about what it is to be, have a childlike faith and how our faith is also supposed to be, because and Jesus compels us to have a faith like a child, but also there's also this idea of having to grow in our faith. So somehow this, comes into this weird paradox of having both a childlike faith and a, a continually maturing faith. And as Christians, that's, we're supposed to have some sort of balance of that. And, you know, Christianity is full of paradoxes, and this is one of them, you know, both childlike versus instead of childlike, instead of childish, which a lot of people might have, you know, just a very simplistic and like not really deep and not really wanting to engage in it. Some people are, oh yeah, I go to church and you know, they have a childish faith, but Jesus wants us to have both a childlike, but also a maturing faith. And we'll kind of, we'll talk about that through that week. Um, the, the fifth week is our belief and we're in, and this is a, a week where I am encouraging, this is my, probably the project that I encourage a lot of people to do is, uh, to rewrite Psalm 131 in their own words. And I've, and it's just a, it's a great challenge to people to, as, as you've been studying it, just think about, okay, so how am I gonna rewrite this? You know, and, and for some people it's different, you know, they have, I've, I've heard some really beautiful poems from people, just how they've processed through it. And so it allows us to like, think about, how our lives connect with what God is teaching us through the psalm. And some people kind of get a little, oh, I don't know if I can rewrite scripture, but that's, I don't think God will get offended by it. It's really an act of prayer, an act of like lending your voice to what God is teaching us. And then the final week, we talk about hope. Uh, it ends with Israel, put your hope in the Lord. So we, we talk about how to, um, what that looks like both for us, um, you know, starts out with Israel. So, so the person in who's writing a Psalm is wanting his people, the people of God, the people that he knows to, to put their hope in the Lord. So think about who is your Israel? Who are those people in your life that you want them to put their hope in God? And then what does it look like for us to put our hope in the Lord? And, how is our hope, we'll go into a bit, is how our hope is different than what the psalmist had for hope. We, you know, the psalmist was hoping for the Lord, hoping for the Messiah to come. And we have the Messiah, we have Jesus. And so our hope is a different type of hope. It's a hope that's been fulfilled, that we have the hope of, of Jesus. We know the story of what the psalmist didn't know. He didn't know where God was going to be or when, how God was going to move in our world. And we have Jesus who showed us how to have hope in God and how our hope in God can lead us forward. So that's kind of the overall scope of this series where we're going to kind of start out and where we're going to end. Um, so, and we'll go a little bit more into, uh, a little bit later, we'll go into kind of what some of the structures are in that and how to do that. Any questions about this, the what, where we're going? All right. Excellent. Y'all are a chatty bunch. <laughs> so when, so that this comes on to you, like each of us, when are we going to have our group? 
So my, my encouragement to you is um, choose a day and a time. What, what do you think would work best for you and maybe the people that you want to invite? Some of you already have that, but would you, instead of just telling me now, because I'll forget it, why don't you um, email me when you're thinking? I know Braden sent me when they're doing it, and I, I know it's Wednesdays at some time. But uh, if you email it to me, then uh, let me know, and then I can have that list. If you can, if you think about it, and when you know you want to do it, it's today, uh, or not if you want to do it today, but when today you want to do it, like send me that time so that I can start recruiting. So once I know, once I have a list of when groups are meeting, I can let people know, and then I can be like, start trying to put help people get connected with groups. So that's. Uh, important so and it, you know so for example maybe a tuesday night at 6 30 maybe that works for you you know maybe that does it that's okay um and it's okay if uh you know mark's having a group and it's the same time as dara's group it doesn't mean they're competing against each other it's, it's just you know that's okay someone might um just want to come then you know that and that's all right and how long so how long is an interesting question so how long will our group last well a we know it's six weeks but um so roughly between 45 minutes to an hour and a quarter depending on your group depending on how you feel like you know what your time is and we'll talk a little bit more about you know zoom groups length are different than like an in-person group length a person engaging on a computer screen is a different animal, a different beast, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But so think about that, Think, look over the curriculum. So within the curriculum, there are different ways to make it both you know, shorter or longer. So if you wanna go longer, there are different aspects to apply to your group and say, hey, we're gonna do this and that. And I'll talk more about how the curriculum's structured in a little bit. Um, and where, so, encouraging online gatherings uh if you want to you know brave uh in-person gathering that's up to you i'll let you think about that but really online gatherings you know there are different places you can use zoom um the thing with zoom is if you don't have a paid account it's only you get like 40 minutes and then they'll like then it's over so and i don't want to have to have you spend money but that's that's, we only have, we have a, one account that's a church account that, but let's say you're going to have your group. We can't have two groups having a group. If it's the church account, they can only, you can only, it's just, thing. there also is Google Meet, which is like Zoom, but it's on Google. Mark? Um, Beth has an account, so we can host a group. Um, and she says they're 15 or $16 a month and you yeah. can subscribe by the month. Mm -hmm. So if 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 that's a big deal, um, talk to me. We can probably work something out. Yes. So yeah, but the, so yeah, it's a yeah. You can get a group. Um, uh, but there's also if you wanted Google Meet, I think I don't know if there's a time limit on that, or Facebook Messenger. Those are all you can do video chat with people there, and like you could set up, you could do your group in that way. So those are different, I'm sure there are other formats or programs you could use um, you know, or that are out there, um, Skype or, I don't know if you can do Skype or not, That's, I don't know. Uh, but I'm sure you have your formats and maybe certain people would like certain ones. Um, and it depends on what you wanna do, how you wanna do it. So we'll go more into that. So I, I often do, oops, I went back. I don't know why I have that twice. Where? Yeah. So, yeah. So how you want to do it, how you want to structure it. If you want to do like some sort of PowerPoint, you can, you don't have to. That's, um, we'll talk a little bit more about that. So a couple things about uh, online gatherings as Zoom gatherings are, so they're often shorter than face-to-face -face gatherings. Like they kind of, off, I mean, they can go longer, they can be as long as you want. But I think people's attention spans and, and what you can do in a group um, 
tend to make those times shorter. Um, some of those, some of that is because there's less time for interpersonal discussion, right? We can't. Um, so at, if you're hosting a group at your home, it's like people come in, you're chatting with them, you're talking with them about their life or you know catching up with them, and then groups don't really start until you know maybe 15 minutes later, right? Because you're doing all this like good fellowship time, which is important. Unfortunately, in like a Zoom group, we can't, you know, if I'm leading and I'm like, I want to catch up with Jackie, I'm like, hey, Jackie, how's it? And all you have is everybody else listening to my conversation with Jackie. Like, oh, how are things with Ramsey's? How, you know, how's this work? You know, we can't have, like, if I were at my house and I was having this conversation with Jackie, Mark could be off with Braden talking about something else. But he can't talk with Braden, you know, at the same time I'm talking with Jackie on on Zoom. It gets a little, I mean, I guess he could, but it'd be really, like, hectic and awkward. If, if you have an account, it is possible to set up a breakout room so that you can do separate simultaneous conversations. Yeah. Advanced Zoom user, like my wife. Yeah, I know. I haven't tried those. I haven't. So, but that's, it's just... Oftentimes, then it's trying to figure that out. But there's so one of the main reasons is it just makes less time for interpersonal discussion. There's also uncontrollable distractions. Like if you were having group at my house, we would just I would be able to control the environment, but I can't control if um, you know we're sitting here and then Jackie's dog jumps up on the the uh, screen. You know, it's like. You know, I, if I were in my house and I had a pet, which I don't, I could put the dog out and we would all engage in that, you know, but there are things that you can control when you're having a group at your house or at a different location that you can't control because, you know, somebody get is, you know, they're gathering together and one person's eating their dinner and, you know, that's, that's cool. They're eating their dinner, but sometimes it's also distracting. You're, you're watching somebody eat while they're doing, it's also and so those are part of it. Um, there's all active dog, right? What's that? You cannot control acts of dog. Right, exactly. Like a dyslexic, the acts of dog. Yeah. Tech issues are always going to abound, I'm sure. Uh, you know, if you wanted to have a PowerPoint, you know, if you wanted, you know, the other once I was, I was doing this uh, lesson with some people, with some friends, not this lesson, but uh, we were on our last of the uh, series with some friends of mine. And that morning, you know, I got the, up, the notice from Windows. Hey, we want to update your Windows. I'm like, okay. And it took Windows like three hours to update it. And my group was like, I thought, oh, I, I'll update it and I'll have plenty of time to get my group in. I didn't, you know, I had to like get on a different computer where my PowerPoint wasn't saved. And so I had to go through it without a PowerPoint and which is fine, but it just made, you know, those tech issues, you never know, or someone's like, how do I log on? What do I do? You know? Um, and it kind of, you know, it makes it more difficult. Uh, you never know what tech issue is going to show up, right? You know, it's going to be like, you're thinking, oh, I've got it all down. And all of a sudden, you know, your internet crashes out or you know, that's, or something, you know, you've got four people wanting to share the internet and it makes it kind of lag. I know showing videos can be kind of a, a hard thing. I, it, this series has videos. I've created a video for each lesson. Um, I haven't figured out the best way to show videos that like, uh, the, Maybe because it's hard to practice without when you're by yourself. How do I practice showing a video to somebody? You know, when I'm like, I have to. But like, I've tried to show videos, and then they would they would be like, uh, we didn't get to really see it. It was all glitchy. It didn't you couldn't hear the sound and all that. I think there's ways to go about doing that, but there's always going to be some sort of tech issue. You'll put, say, hey, we're going to watch this video, and then we'll talk about it, and you have the video playing and then at the end they're like oh yeah we didn't hear that and you're like okay gotta make it up so also you kind of have to have more of a streamlined conversations kind of have to you know it's it, they can get tangential your conversations they could go from one place to another 
but uh, when you're online, it's kind of have to be more streamlined than when you're in person. You, rabbit trails are sometimes harder to navigate around. And so just try to be more weird. Also, you know, you have like one person, you know, it's really just one person talking and then another person talking. And you have to have to ask a question and then wait. So someone will unmute themselves and, or two people start talking over each other. When it's in person, it's easier to be like, you know, when two, one person talks, you know, another person. But you also sometimes have to have, you know, more guided in saying, okay, Dara, tell me what you think. Where in a, in a small group, you might not have to do, like when you're sitting around, you know, in a room together, you might not have to be like, Dara, can you tell me what? But uh, here you might have to be because people are just, you know, then they have to unmute themselves and things like that. Um, so those are things to be mindful of as you have that these online, and I, I have definitely you know, done plenty, but I'm still learning a lot about how to do, you know, somewhat quality uh, discussions. And it's hard. It's a lot harder. I prefer in person. You can read people's body language. You can read their, um, you know, because it's a lot harder to read someone's body language when you're on a computer, when you're staring at their face from a computer. Or, you know, they'll, they'll like, hit the screen and you'll see like their forehead or, or something and you'll be like, I can't even see myself right now. I'm like, uh, did I put it back? Yeah. Ah, where am I going? Oops. Yeah. So you have to, am I okay? I moved the screen. So now I don't even know if I'm, if y'all can see me. Okay. Bald head reflecting. All right. So yeah, just be mindful of your conversations. I know at each, you know, I, I like to start groups with icebreaker questions. So, and that's definitely, you have to kind of ask each person individually because it's hard to be like, okay, here's our question. And you want everybody, especially the icebreaker for me, I think that's a, uh, a one key way, you at least get everybody talking at least once. So you have to be like, okay, our icebreaker is this. All right, Braden, what's your answer? And then Mark, what's your answer? Because when you're sitting in a room and you're like, we'll just go around the circle and everybody will share it's everybody's screen circle is different you know i in order i've got jackie mark uh brayden rachel and dara you might have a totally different group so we won't you know in in different order so it's different people um yeah any questions we you tracking along with me we good awesome all right so um, how what's that mark couple of suggestions uh -huh. if you're hosting it's a good idea to be in an environment where you get natural front light so that you're not you know backlighted in, in a shadow on your face and not too much back not too much front light so you're washed out yeah. so you might try thinking about sitting different places in your house or arranging lamps or something so that you have a nice you, you've done a really good job Dave you've got a nice warm yellow friendly welcoming glow to your forehead there. Ooh, nice. So, um, and on my screen, I look sort of blue and washed out. So I, I haven't done as good a job as you have. Yeah, well, I, yeah, I had to pull up a separate light because this is, that's without this extra light. Yeah. So yeah, yeah you'll be mindful of people, you're, people are gonna be watching you. Yeah, it's also, you have to kind of be aware that as what you're doing, just like I, I'm, I'm watching you all. And it's also, it's, it is harder to read people's faces. It's, you know, looking at this small screen, it's hard to tell, are they engaged? Are they tracking? Are they listening? You know, hopefully they're listening, but it's different. You know, someone's like, cause I, like I look, I'm looking at when I'm talking to Mark, I'm looking at the picture of Mark, but that means my eyes aren't at the camera where I'm looking Hey, you know, so you know, when, if I were in conversation, I'd be looking at Mark, talking to him, you know, but it might look like I'm looking to the side. So these, these are some of the struggles that we have as we interact on, on, but there's also some benefits, you know, you can engage with people, you know, that you would never normally see, you know, you'll, uh, someone, some people, there are people that fear it and they're like, I'm not going to do a Zoom meeting. But there are other people who are like, well, I can actually attend this thing because I don't have to leave my house or I can be on 
vacation even and, and take an hour out and you know go do my little thing and go back to vacation because it's I don't have to travel all the way to somebody's house so there are there are options in that so there are some positives and negatives to these uh, group gatherings um, so how are we going to go about this so small group discussion is of course the big thing um, you know we have and we'll, I'll show you a little bit more of the curriculum in a little bit, but you can, there are different, the main thing, there's a main small group discussion guide um, for the leaders. I've also created a uh, kind of a small group, uh, like a, what's it, like the participant guide. So it has uh, some quotes and scripture verses and things like that and questions so that, like I use PowerPoint often to guide the conversation, but you know, you don't have to use PowerPoint, create PowerPoint or anything like that. Uh, but it's hard if you don't have, people don't have the, the quote. If you're like, oh, I'm gonna have this quote and I wanna talk to you about this quote and you read the quote, if, it, if it's not in front of somebody, then it's hard. But if we, if we put it in a PowerPoint or if they have it on the worksheet that uh, I put together, then they can follow along with that. So, um, and you feel, you can take what I've designed and tailor it to you you don't have to like follow it to a t and be like this is what dave said i have to say right here so i have to say that you know this that's just kind of like when it says say like i'll tell you what to say but it's not like you have to say these words it's kind of gives you an idea of how to transition what we're talking into the next thing so it's kind of giving you guided but you take it you look through it i would encourage you to look through it ahead of time don't be like, oh, I'm just going to print it out and just kind of start going through it without knowing what you're going through. Because that's, I'm sure we've all been through groups where a person, you know, it's like uh, leading, they don't, they don't even know where the lesson's going. So, so take, a, take a look at it ahead of time and do it. Also included in there, so I've given you the basic small group discussion, which probably should last, you know, maybe a, 40 minute discussion, uh, give or take, depending on how talkative your group is. Sometimes some you know, you got dive into something and you get through like a page and you're like, oh wow, you know, this is you know, we've already gone through a lot. Uh, you never know. But there's also a couple supplemental things that that you can add to your um, lesson. So I'm trying to make it so you can tailor your lesson to your group to what maybe how you want to lead your group as well. So uh, one is the week in review. So you can add this to your lesson where you talk about your experience from last week. So each week they have, a, you'll have a, your small group, but there's also a daily devotional that people can engage with and with different prayer and a prayer activity and an art activity. So you can, the week in reviews allows you to take, you know, those things and kind of just process a little bit what they what, what they learned during the week on their own time so there's that to add to your group the first week there's also a course overview kind of uh instead of a week in review since we haven't done that it's kind of go, shows you where where the course is going so that might be a good thing to add to your first week is let so everyone kind of knows where we're going and how we're going to get there in different ways uh, there's also the week ahead, so at the you can add this towards maybe the end of a lesson and talk about this is what we're going to be studying this week. You know, you, this is your devotional, this is your prayer practice, uh, this is your uh, different things, so that they can know where the conversation is headed. Um, there's a video discussion each week. I've uh, created a video. They're between five to eight minutes long. Uh, it's just kind of my teaching, and it's, I talk about um, things. And so sometimes it's, uh, and I'll try. I will put. I'm putting in the lessons like when they're maybe a good time to talk about it because certain themes, certain themes I talk about just in the video, certain themes I talk about you know throughout the day. But so this is something you can add to your group. You could tell them they can also just do this on their own. You say, hey, watch the video and talk about and then we can you can kind of we uh intertwine it if you want to have them watch it ahead of time 
So there's a video and a discuss, uh, different discussion questions that can go with it. Um, uh, this is something I've been actually a new addition to it, uh, putting into it, a uh, Jesus connection. So kind of connecting the story, what we're talking about in Psalm 131 with something that with something of Jesus. So there's a parable of Jesus with the rich man and his barns. There's the story of the rich young ruler. There's Jesus calming the storm. So this is an, you can add this to your lesson. You think, oh, I want to add you know, a Jesus connection. So you can add that to your lesson. Um, or, I mean, you could say, hey, instead of doing our regular lesson, we want to do the Jesus connection. So you can pick and choose and kind of work with whatever there is. There's also a prayer practice. Each week, uh, we have a different prayer practice. The first week, there's a breathing prayer. The second week, uh, I'm kind of tweaking it. The second week is actually Lectio Divina, which is a divine reading. And so you can walk through that with your group. Uh, this is a, something that they'll do on their own, but you can also do it kind of together as a group, a, a, a condensed version of it. Um, and so today during the service, I will actually teach people the breathing prayer as part of the service um, as well. Um, so I'm, I'm trying, I'm going to try to create some videos for that. I have a, a breathing prayer video and I have a, one for Lectio Divina. I'll try to put something there so you can be like, okay, so you can kind of figure out how to do those. Um, so these are really just a chance just to connect with God, either as an individual or as a group. Um, and then there's, okay, yeah, so that's how, these are the structures, things that you can take and add and uh, to the group to make it better. And I'll, I'll show you how to access this in just a minute. There's also, um, as we said, you talk about the week ahead, and these are some things that you can encourage your people to engage with. Uh, that there's a daily devotional each each week. There'll be like a five day devotional, kind of that kind of connects with the theme, so that they can kind of spend their own private time, spending time with God and uh, processing this. Uh, and in that, uh, the daily devotional includes um, a soundtrack. I've got several different songs. That are it'll be on the website. They can there's a, a which songs to listen to uh, each week, each daily devotional. I, I encourage everybody to begin with the the breathing prayer, which will uh, is part of that as well. Um, and then there's some other different aspects of it. There's different ways that they can engage. Sometimes there's like a artistic response or a journaling response or different things like that. So these are just ways that people can engage with uh, the passage on their own. Yeah, so include those things, prayer practice. Um, so here we go, access on the website. So I'm putting all our lessons on the website. Uh, this is the website, sppcsa.com. Let's see if we can see what happens, see if this works. Big money, big money. And here we go. Y'all can see that? No, we're looking at the PowerPoint. You, oh, uh, let me see. Let's see if I can. Oh, you have to share that. Uh, let me try this again. Uh, share screen. Let's go to this one. Can you see it now? It's loading. Yes, we see it. All right. So if you go to the site, you know, it's on the church website and then it's uh, CQHT, Calm, Quiet, Hope, Trust. And I'll, I'll have to use my touch screen thing. So I've got an introductory video, just kind of gives you uh, what the, the thing is about, the, um, the lesson, the, the scripture there. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about there's videos and music and prayer and art. Uh, then you'll see week one, our pilgrimage, and it gives you a little bit of the thing. If you click on that, you come to this page and so i put the weekly video at the top that they can watch if they want you know that's that's available for them and then i have here all the things that you'll need you'll have uh the leader's guide so if you click on that you'll get to a pdf do you see this now or my excellent so you have a pdf full of all the information I'm actually updating it because I had uh, 
uh, Braden's mom actually she's uh, proofreading it for me so because my look at helping me find my typos because my wife's usually my uh, proofreader but she's a little busy these days um, so to get kind of walks you through and what the lessons are you know it starts with an icebreaker and then like the first one would be uh, where would you go on vacation if you had to walk there right uh, that's a you know I don't know where I go. Yeah, I looked it up, and you know, like Disneyland is like eighteen, you know, eighteen days, as well as uh, Disney World. So if you wanted to go to Disney, it's going to take you eighteen days to walk there, according to Google. So I don't know if that accounts for sleeping at night or not. Um, and then I have I, I try to any of these I introduce quotes throughout the time, kind of just kind of quotes that help us uh connect there and then there's the scripture passage and we just kind of walk through it and so your job then would be to kind of take this lesson and kind of adapt it to you what works for you feel free if it doesn't work to, for you that's okay if it does that's great so here i've got towards the end i give you paths for the journey so these are the things that you can add like your the course overview, and those will be separate PDFs that you can access um, and go through. So this is, that's not what I wanted. Uh, that'll walk you through that. Um, and so each lesson, I usually start, you know, with an icebreaker, but I also use Psalm 131. It's kind of like our opening prayer. And so it's kind of like a you opening and closing prayer to kind of bookend what we're studying um so that's that you go back to here and there's uh all these different things right so there's the uh devotional course ahead then there's the um daily devotional kind of so this is what people will get then they can do it on their own so it kind of gives them an overview talks a little bit about the breathing prayer and the soundtrack which is the music um and you know, it gives them, you know, each day trying to keep, they just kind of go through this, you know, and this, so you would encourage them, your people to go through that. And so that will help them connect it on a personal level. Like I said, there's, uh, then there's the youth stuff and the children stuff. This is kind of a, something I'm putting together for people with that, with children, especially to help them connect with it. Uh, I'm developing this family service. I'll show you what I've got so far. Just because I think it'll be good if it comes up. It is still in construction, but. So this is a Google Slides thing. And what it's got is some videos for them to uh, engage with. So I've got like some videos from me talking, but then there's also videos of uh, other people. Pastor Paul does a video. Some people from the church, some people like just fun, silly videos that we have as well. So these are going to be options for families to engage with. It's mostly taking the, the Jesus stories, but there's a little bit of the Psalm 131 as well in that. So it helps parents with kids to connect with this as well. Dave, I've been clicking along behind you and I don't get access to that when I try and get there. On family service? Right. What do you get? Um, it asked me to sign into Google, and I did, and it said you need access. Ask for access from the site curator. All right. I'll have to change. Well, I'll, I'll have to figure that out then. Thanks. It's hard to know these things when you know when I have access from my other computer, and it's like oh, <laughs> when I'm logged in. So yeah. There's also uh, we talk about the breathing prayer. I've got the video of the breathing prayer there. Um, yeah. So then there's also the week videos. I have just a collection of videos here as well. That I'm, you know, we've got our weekly videos, but then I'll probably add some other things in there too. People, uh, there's a video on Lectio Divina. Uh, and then there is the soundtrack, which people, each track will be when it's on the serve uh, in the study, but you can encourage people, they can, listen to it they can actually if you right click it you can save link as and save save the track to your 
I don't know how you do it on your phone. I'm sure there's a way to do it on your phone or whatnot, but you can save that music and listen to it. Uh, there's, so I've got seven different tracks. We actually use like six of them in the series. Uh, this last one is a reggae version of it, which I, you know, it's a long one, so I didn't really incorporate it into anything, but it's, people want to listen to it, they can. Yeah, any, so we're pretty much wrapping up and we can talk next week more about and take it a little bit more in depth on how to structure things and everything. But I just wanted to give you guys kind of an overview of where things were and how things are looking. Any questions? Excellent. So thank you guys. Dave, this looks like a whole lot of work that you put in. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah, it is. It's been one of my pet projects. It's been something I've been really enjoying. So maybe someday I'll get it published. You guys will be like, hey, I was there. I did that. That's my that's actually my my goal. But um but I hope that you enjoy it, that you'll engage with it. Um and you know, encourage people to participate. If someone says they can't do it, they can't, they don't want to be in a group, they don't like Zoom groups, tell them they can just kind of do it on their own or they can do it with their spouse or you know you know people are have an excuse for why they don't they won't want to do it sure but you can be like well there are plenty of ways to engage even just a small portion of it you know let's see you know, tell them just listen to the music or just watch the video you know so yeah excellent any other questions or thoughts and you can feel free to shoot me an email or text or whatever if you have any other thoughts or uh, things you want to talk about, and I will uh, let you know. So please, if you think about when you want to lead your group, if you can get that to me soon, and I'll, I'll try to, I want to try to send out something to the church tomorrow, really, to let them know like couple, like when some of these groups are, so that they can start like thinking about it, and then I can start uh, inviting people to join your groups and all of that. All right. Excellent. Now, yeah. Yeah. Any questions, thoughts? All right. I'm going to close this in prayer and then we can go have the rest of our day. God, I thank you so much for, uh, for Jackie and Mark and Rachel and Braden and Dara and even Dan, who's going to listen later. Um, pray that you would just be with us, Lord. Um, thank you for just putting in our hearts the, the desire to help others and help ourselves and uh, grow in our connection with you, Lord. I pray that this would be a rewarding and fulfilling experience, that they would just be drawn to you deeper and to show your love to others in, in remarkable ways, Lord. Thank you for all you do for us, Lord, even in the midst of this crazy, chaotic pandemic of a world, Lord, that you are still with us and guiding us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, y'all. Thank you so much. I miss y'all. Wish we could hang out in person. And get the name of Dan's electrician who came in on Sunday morning. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he should be taking a Sabbath. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you all. Hope you have thank a you, great Dave. day. You're welcome. I'll talk to you later. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.